I'm Stacy Treklas, and welcome to the OLT podcast. With me today is Kathy Cassidy, who is the Disability Services Coordinator here at PNC. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Stacy. How are you? Thank. I'm great. Thanks for asking. Um, really glad you could come today. Thank you. And uh, just have a little chat, um, just to learn a little bit more about disabilities and kind of what you do on campus and how we can all work together to help our students uh, succeed. Okay. So tell, could you tell us a little bit about what you do to help students? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, students when they come into PNC or any college or university, if they have a documented disability, generally if they want accommodations, they'll seek that through the Office of Disability Services. Uh, sometimes it goes by a different name, just depends on where you're at, but here at PNC, it's the Office to Office of Students with Disabilities. Mm -hmm. And they'll generally come in with some form of documentation. Sometimes it's an IEP from high school. Sometimes it's a, a more recent evaluation. Just depends on the nature of the disability. Once that's presented, we meet, we have a conversation, and we kind of gauge what kind of accommodations would be appropriate. The whole idea is to put folks that have a disability challenge to get them on an equal playing field um, with students that don't have a disability. So sometimes it takes a form of extended time for testing, um, a reduced distraction environment for testing. Just depends on the nature of the disability and with regards to what we do for accommodations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so how does that play in terms of online learning? Do you ever have students that have trouble with their online classes? Sure, and that's a real hot topic right now. Um, we are obligated to uh, make sure that all our online content is accessible. That's something that a lot of colleges and universities are trying to keep up with mm -hmm. and uh, modify if they don't have that. Um, that is, you know, where your resources in the university. Um, you're a great resource here as far as looking at accessibility for our material. Um, your faculty and staff and the students, I think, would probably benefit from using you as a resource because of the savvy that you have in that area. But that is an extremely important part when um, you're looking at the law, which is 504, which covers public institutions of higher learning we have to have all our curriculum, all our material accessible to all people. And that includes people with a visual impairment, um, people that have dyslexia, that you know, it's a learning disorder where you have to be able to access material just mm -hmm. like every other student. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I often will mention things in different kinds of workshops about, you know, little tidbits and different ways that you can simply make your courses more accessible because it doesn't have to be a big chore, right? right? It right. can just be simple things like give your lecture notes along with the PowerPoint. Or that's very, yeah. That's, that's a common one, important. right? Mm -hmm. um, if there's a captioned video available uh, from maybe a publisher or something, but it's not immediately accessible. You can ask the publisher right. to provide those kinds of materials, right? They sure can. Um, and do you ever help people uh, contact a publisher I if do. they're not sure what yeah. to do? Yeah, I worked quite a bit actually at the beginning of the semester on that very yeah. that very thing. Um, and I would say nine tenths of the the people that I contacted with the publishers, they were extremely helpful and and Good. complied just almost with an, an immediate response. Yeah, and well, I think sometimes we have folks out there who. Um, maybe don't know that they have a disability. Maybe they didn't get diagnosed sure. properly when they were in, in high school, yeah. or they might be returning students, right. uh, older folks that you know are coming back and they may never have known that they right. had a learning disability. Or maybe as they get older, they might their sight might be going. Little things like that. Um, yeah. They might not realize that they could actually come to you and get some sure. help. Sure. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> excuse me. At the very minimal, uh, at the at the minimum, we can refer. If there's, um, like you mentioned, that a student that might come in that's never been diagnosed with a learning difference, um, and they come in and are talking about how they learn, where their challenges are, there's a lot of resources out there uh, mm -hmm. for students that may be, you know, coming to school with these differences and need to have some kind of accommodation, yeah. but lack the the different medical records, the psychological, whatever um, examinations that you're going to have to, you know, go through to get that. 
diagnosis. So it's, um, you know, the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation is a really good resource for us uh, to, to encourage the student to go and, um, you know, talk to them and, and let them know that the disability services person, where they're going to school, has encouraged them to, to seek if they qualify for services. Mm -hmm. And that testing, if they are accepted, that testing would be free for the student. Do you have any tips for faculty as far as how to maybe encourage a student to go and take those tests? Or, you know, how do you, sometimes it's hard to broach that conversation? Sure, yeah, if, you, if you're a faculty member and you're noticing a student or some of your students um, struggling, you know, in an area or mm -hmm. <clears throat> they might even disclose to you um, you know, I've never been good in this field or this subject, rather, and I just, you know, if, if they're talking um, about their challenges and you have a feeling that maybe there's uh, maybe a learning disability or just something that needs more um, examination, then please refer that student, you know, encourage them to talk to the, the disability services person on campus and get some um, some feedback on to you know how they're learning what's going on and, and maybe it is something we can refer over but faculty you know universal design is is a um, is a philosophy that's not only for architecture in the building but in the classroom and the curriculum mm -hmm. and it's is often um, looked at as an overwhelming kind of task uh, it doesn't have to be it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> have to be no. no it's it's definitely not and again, you are an excellent resource for um, help and support in looking at universal design in the classroom. I, I've been very impressed with that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but that's, you know, and it really simplistically, um, it's, it's just offering more choices and more ways to address material. Um, and we even now have Quality Matters, which is a rubric that um, helps people sort of check off, yes, I do this, no, I don't do that, maybe I should go back and look at that some more. Um, and that rubric, uh, we've got the newest version, and there's a whole two standards all about mm -hmm. universal design and accessible design. Wonderful. Uh, to ensure that, you know, you're meeting things like ensuring that students know where to go when they do need help, that right. they can access captioned videos, or at least there's some sort of um, um, reasonable, you know, accessible thing that they can get that That's great. is the same as what everybody else might be yeah. able to access. So um, I know that caption videos must be captioned. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's a very timely topic right now. Yes, it is. Some They've changed going some going of the on. laws. Yeah. Videos yeah. must be captioned. Yeah. Um, so does that mean a transcript isn't good enough? It really needs to be caption captioned. Well, I I would encourage the caption caption yeah. yeah I think that that's the best way to go you know what we want to strive for is the closest to equality um, in in all its forms and mm -hmm. and that you know a caption is better than the transcript so that's yeah, yeah. and w the thing is that we're capable we have the technology to do that and there's really no reason not to Absolutely. And lots of reasons to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, faculty aren't by themselves in this. Absolutely They can not. contact my office. They can also contact the Graduate and Extended Learning Office, mm -hmm. which has the capability to do longer videos. Uh, they have the software and things, and they can actually do a really nice job making um, videos that have all the full cap captions synced uh, and a transcript as well, in mm -hmm. case you want both of those things. And they can turn them around fairly quickly. Um, depending on what your needs are. And the department, you know, you can contact a department and they can work out payments. I think there's a payment involved, but okay. um, it's pretty low. So, you know, if you have a large amount of videos, it's probably worth right. paying a little bit now rather than maybe getting into a lawsuit. Yeah, you later. definitely mean MIT and Harvard, too, very respected institutions of higher learning are going mm -hmm. through that right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, exactly what you said a little bit in the front end is going to save some heartache on, on the other side of it. So Absolutely. Be, being proactive is, is the way to go.
It really is. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, everyone will appreciate it. The thing that I always um, find helpful to think about uh, in terms of accessibility is it doesn't just help a certain percentage of students that have disabilities. It helps everybody. Exactly. Sometimes exactly. you just don't want to sit there and listen to a video. You'd rather just read through it, maybe scan it because you've already seen it once, but you want to scan mm -hmm. through a transcript or even the captions again because you missed something. Um, right. You know, everybody has those things. Sometimes you're um, working out while you're trying to do your homework mm -hmm. and you'll have your video up there and you won't be able sure. to hear. Um, maybe you're in the library and you can't mm -hmm. have the sound up on your computer. Right. All those things are stuff that all of us encounter every day but we don't really right. think about. Yeah. Um, and even the opposite of that, um, the, the books that are available in audio format. Mm -hmm. When we're, maybe we have students that drive, and I know we have students that drive long distances. Yep. Yep. Uh, if they could have the audio version of the book, whether right. they're disabled or not, they're going to benefit immensely because they can sit there and listen to it in the car while yeah. they're driving and they can get more things done. That's an excellent point. I think that, um, you know, during the time that I was teaching, I, I really embraced that. Um, multiple means of delivery mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with or without a disability it's, it's exactly what you said um, if you can see it if you can hear it if you can write about it if you can talk to another student about it, all those different ways you have all these different types of learners you know not everybody does well with a long lecture not everybody does well solely with video mm -hmm. so this is and, and then again it instills into the long-term memory better when you have these different approaches yep. um, that's been proven you know quite a long time ago so it, it does benefit every student and mm -hmm. you know everybody looking at that material as many ways as we can offer it's going to be beneficial exactly um, do you have any kind of tips or uh, even specific technologies that you would recommend to folks that are thinking about ways to make sure their courses are more accessible sure it, it really depends on the the nature of what you're dealing with as far as learning um, but we have you know through the disability resource page we have um, some links to like a free text reader um, we have um, you know drag and dictate is or naturally speaking is another mm -hmm. uh, really good resource so again it, it just depends on on how you learn best and and where you need support in your learning where we've just recently um, purchased a Kurzweil who which is an incredible piece of software yes, yes. yeah I'm really really very fond of, of what that does and um, it's not only a screen reader you know it it, it works with you um, if you have dyslexia it works with you if you are visually impaired it works with you if you just came out of high school and you don't know how to do a research paper yeah and you have no other you know um, that's it's not a disability but that's just your situation that you've just came out of high school mm -hmm. um, and really are at odds with how do I do this paper it is an incredible software program that I'm very excited and, and we're going to be able to starting in the fall semester we're going to be able to offer um, students that go to PNC the ability to have that on their computer at home oh, while they're a registered student with us wonderful. and that'll be yeah <clears throat> that's very exciting that's because great. that's going to be very very helpful yeah will it also be available in labs yes it's going to be available in a number of different places so great yeah yeah we'll have it posted and yeah. Keep, yeah good yeah I know that's a very wonderful yeah. software you can control the computer yeah. you can talk to the computer it'll talk back it's, to you yeah. it'll do yeah. everything that you could possibly yeah. want and you won't have to use the keyboard at all exactly basically. yeah that's the whole goal of yeah. it right yeah it's uh, wonderful right now we have JAWS I know in a couple of uh, the labs yeah we, we have, have some here labs. in this building and in we have the tech some over building. in the Student mm -hmm. Success Center um, yeah and uh, while that's a, a good uh, software program I think that it's similar right it's similar it's right things. not quite you know the bells and whistles are a little yeah. different so yeah. Um, but yeah it's uh, w there's quite a bit of assisted technology out there we just need to match up the student with what's best suited for their support mm-hmm 
and everybody's different. Everybody's so different. So something that works for one student might, even though even if they have the same documented right. disability, oh. something might, else might yeah. completely be wrong yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah, and that's you know a very good point. I'm glad you made that because um, you know, for example, and I think people probably can understand, you know, something like diabetes. You have five people in a room with diabetes, they're all going to have different symptoms, different kinds mm -hmm. of things that they're going to experience. And while there's similarities, the uniqueness of, you know, who they are, their chemistry, that kind of thing, that all goes into play. And it's it's not any different with disabilities with learning or movement or thinking. Mm -hmm. um, we're all unique creatures and uh, that comes through. Um, with our challenges and, and with our strengths. Absolutely, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, can you think of any other tips or technologies that even maybe free things that they can download? I know of one, um, you mentioned Drag and Dictate. That's actually free. Anyone with a iPad or an iPhone or an Android tablet, um, they can download that for free. And it's basically a you know, a dictation tool that can speak into it and it'll write things down. Yeah, I know a lot of them. professionals that use it actually. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, if you're, um, some folks just express themselves better in words spoken right. rather right. than written. So yep. you can write it down first and that, again, that helps everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, even those students that just, they don't really have a documented disability, but right. they just don't express themselves well in writing sure. first. Yep put it down in that yeah. and it saves you some trouble and you can start rearranging words yeah. and see how they look on a page yeah. you know and it helps you develop as a writer I think you know what I would encourage students uh, that are are in higher education um, to really look and examine what's online as far as support I, I see a lot of students that talk about you know the challenges that they're they're having and they're feeling frustrated over a certain subject or um, you know, just the semester overall. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, you know, have you looked at support online? Um, and often the answer is no. Yeah. And I really would encourage people um, to look and see what's out there as far as support or information. And when you type in something into a search engine, you know, type it specifically like, for example, if it's anxiety disorder. You know, type in coping with anxiety disorder in college or for a college student so that you That's can kind of narrow down that search so you, your information is a little more uh, applicable to mm -hmm. what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, many mm -hmm. of the, the disability um, diagnoses are invisible. and. Um, so that's, that's an area too where it's important for us to, you know, if a student comes to you and you're a faculty member and they disclose maybe not the, the specific disability but they have an accommodation letter, don't question that disability. Um, you know, have faith that the process is working appropriately and the person that you have um, doing the services for the students is is examining, you know, paperwork mm -hmm. properly and everything. Um, you know, it's it's often too often that I hear uh, students speak of, you know, some slight challenges that they get from staff and faculty. Unfortunately, sometimes and from their peers, you know, well, you mm -hmm. you don't look disabled is a very common thing. Yeah. Um, and that's that's something that I would like to challenge other people to really think about. If you're somebody who's done that, think about why that is. You know what's behind that a little bit. Um, and you know, the older we get, um, I think it's important to think of the aging process. You know, yes. there's a lot of things that we can come across as we get older, and they're very invisible, yet they are debilitating and they affect a major life mm -hmm. activity. So, the students that are coming to you with these letters and seeking accommodations, it's, it's, a, it's a valid um, accommodation they seek. Right. It, it's not anything to put anybody above or at an advantage. It is simply to get equal access. Mm -hmm. That's well put. So on your website, um, you've added a few resources yeah. lately. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to add, uh, talk about any of those things? Sure. We've got, you know, um, TBIs, the traumatic brain injury diagnosis, is on the increase, unfortunately. Um, 
We have a lot of veterans that are coming back mm -hmm. with TBIs, and we're having more veterans attend higher learning. Yeah. So you're going to see that that diagnosis rise as uh, time goes by, and and people that are not in veteran, you know, have uh, accident or um, sometimes a stroke will cause this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a link that uh, is on our website and it's really, I think, helpful to get support because often you feel isolated, especially if it's a new diagnosis. There's also a link on there to a website that offers um, books that are audio and that takes a little pre-planning because it does take a little while to acquire that stuff, but mm -hmm. um, you know, check out the page and see the different links and see uh, if there's something that would be helpful for you yourself if you're a student or you know some of your students if you're a faculty member mm -hmm. you can always mention that in your orientation or your first day of class when you're going over your syllabus exactly mm -hmm. those are great uh, and on our website too the OLT website um, pnc.edu slash distance there is a series of different resources um, obviously this video uh, will be there and all kinds of other resources a link back to disability services um, so there's lots of different resources out there uh, that you can find on your own and then when you need us you can contact us and you know will help you out with whatever it is that's necessary and can make sure to send students to Kathy uh, so that they can get the, the help that they need if they have questions, um, you know, just to make them feel more comfortable. Right. You know, because that's our goal is to make sure that they oh. have a good school experience. Oh, exactly. Right. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just really appreciate your time today. And well, I appreciate your time. <laughs> and the work that you do. Well, same here. Absolutely. We need, we need good uh, folks like you on campus because there are plenty of students. I'm glad you mentioned the veterans because I know that there's a lot of young men and women coming back with yep. all kinds of different things yep. um, that may affect their abilities to, yeah. you know, do well in school without some assistance. Exactly. And we need to honor their experiences, yes. you know, and, and validate their experiences and the, and the differences. Uh, mm -hmm. And, yeah support everybody you know as much as possible yep. yeah absolutely well thank you kathy You're welcome this has been a great episode thank and thank you to all those watching and we'll see you soon